so today I am doing a special video. It's a tutorial on some new equipment that um, TLC has just purchased. It is the Mudo Value Jet 628 printer, and also we got the Muse 24 inch cutter with it. Um, we love this equipment, however, there is very little tutorials on how to use it. So my husband and I um, spent a better part of three solid days just um, figuring it out, configuring it, and we have it pretty, we have it down now, but we wanted to share some videos on how to use it so that you guys do not have to struggle like we did. So we're going to get into it. We're going to um, put an image, design an image in Flexi 19. I use Flexi 19 to um, print and rip it. And then we're going to print it and cut it and put it on a shirt. So let's get into the video. All right, so we're going to go through step by step of um, designing, well, not really designing because I've already designed, but setting it up in Flexi, printing it, cutting it, and weeding it in this video. So it will be a little bit of a long video, but it's well worth it because there's not many videos about this. So, I've already chosen the design. We're going to open up Flexi. Um, I use Flexi 19. I have the subscription. Um, and you are, when you open it up, and this is not going to be a video on how to set up Flexi. Um, that's other video. And so, um, you're going to open it up and you're going to go to File. And you going to import and I have my design on my desktop that I want to do so let me find that all right it's busy raising ballers with the softball and the baseball we're going to expand it out a little bit I personally am not able to fully design in Flexi. There are some, I'm sure, excellent um, designers that can do it, but I design in either Procreate or Silhouette before I get to this part. So once I get to this part, the design is already done and it's ready to just really be add the contour or cut lines. So we're going to go in here, we're going to go to bitmap, and we're going to hit make transparent. And you're going to click on the white arrow outside of your image. And you see um, all the little dancing ants. However, if you look on the screen, they're not in between the Y and the R. So what you have to do is you have to hold down your shift button and you have to take your magic wand button and you have to click in there as well. And if you look, you see the ants dancing in there as well. Okay, so everywhere that you want to take out the, um, that you want to make it transparent, you want to click on there. And so then there's one, there's a couple of little areas right in between these letters. Let's go ahead and go in between this. No, I'm going to leave that that's in that A because if I make it transparent, then when we go get ready to do the contour cut, it's going to want to take it out. And do we want to take it out? Let's take it out. All right, let's take it out. We're going to take out the G. And in here, in between this E and the R and ballers. And I think that's it. And so you want to choose everything you want transparent in one um, time. Because you can't go back in because it resets it. 
So up here in the right hand area it says there's a little X or a green check. You're going to do the green check. And then all the dancing ants go away. Yeah, and don't hit enter, right? That's <laughs> don't, what you tell me. <laughs> do not hit enter on the screen because <laughs> that light gets it to start cutting. <laughs> so, all right. So at this point, we're ready to just contour cut. Um, so as long as there's a red box around it, you're going to you're going to go to, I'm going to try to be grammatically correct, um, effects and contour cut. It defaults to your last cut. So my last cut, I was in the negative. This one, I want a little bit of a border. So if you look up here in the top right, it says negative. 0 0.1 at the moment. I want to just make it future Leanne here from editing. Um, I just discovered that a whole section of the printing uh, setting up to print in the Flexi did not get recorded. So I will re-record that section in another tutorial. Sorry about that. behind the scenes I had to change this back to four um, it just wasn't printing the registration marks correctly so most important feature is to make sure that you get all four of these registration marks if you don't then the rest of it just won't work so it is it is printing and as you can see it's going pretty quick um, I don't know what the actual speed is, but All right, so we have our transfers printed, and we're going to load it into our Muse 24. We bought this cutter to go along with this printer from Sign Warehouse, and so what you're going to do is there's the little lever back here. You're going to push it down. This raises the bar so that we can slide our vinyl up under it. So you want to slide it, you want to get it started, and then I pull it to the back, like this. Alright, so right here is a little line that says, please align the material with the black lines. So what I do is I line up the side of the vinyl with the side of the sticker, and then where the arrow is, I put my registration mark. So once you get that lined up, hold it in place, 
pull the bar up and now your vinyl is locked in place and it won't move over here and this was like it took my husband and I two days to figure this out so this blade here has to be placed right in the the curve of the register the first registration mark so you over here on the control panel you have these arrows and you just move the arrows and get your blade in the spot and so once it gets lined up you have to put the corner of the blade right on the registration right. mark corner inside the registration mark right so all right so it is right in the corner so once you have it in this spot then you come back over to production manager on your computer and send all right so it's so it picked up the first registration which is good oh good it didn't pick up this okay so it beeps and if you look over here I don't know, can you see the little red X, honey? Mm -mm. All right, there is a little red X. You have to take that and put it in the corner of the registration mark. And we need to pick up stylus so we can do this. And you can use the little arrows and then once it gets into the corner, then you hit OK. It didn't find it, so you have to go back to it again. Oh, there's some. You have to be exactly right in the corner. There it goes. So then it goes up and it looks for the next one. It found it. And it's looking for the last one. It found it. And then it starts cutting. It took us <laughs> two days to figure that out. I mean, I was at the point where I was like, okay, we're, we're just sending this back because I couldn't even figure out how to load the, the vinyl. So it is cutting now, and once it finishes cutting, then I will show you how easy it is to weed it out. And then we will have four transfers that are ready to be put on your website. All right, so we have printed, we have cut. Now we need to separate our designs. So I will be using this cutter to just take off the excess. Um, you don't wanna go in between the designs because once you weed it, you'll be able to see your sides much easier, but Taking off the excess just helps. So basically you're going to take a weeding tool and get it started just like that.
This is Right, we did do inside the bee. This is basically every place that we made transparent. If you remember, all those spots that we made transparent is the spots that we're cutting. And right here in the A. If you look at it at the side, you can see some of your cut lines. I'm sorry, I'm getting my head in the way. And then if you feel over it. Alright. So that's one. I'll do the others in a bit. Let me throw this away. Alright. So then you take your scissors and we're going to cut around our design and just be careful right here where you've got your design close. Alright, we're gonna, I'll do those later. This is the masking tape. I haven't decided if I like it. I have tried a couple of different options. And so you want to cut your mask and tape the same size as your design, of course. All right, let me throw that aside too. So. And of course, when doing all of this, you want to make sure you have a good working surface. Um, so we've got our design face up, our masking tape. We're going to peel it from its backing. I have another masking tape that doesn't have the backing. I just feel like, you know, I have two. What I do is I fold it kind of like this in half. And then I set it right on top and just let it go out. Will you hand me that squeegee? Looks like you start from the center. Yeah. And then just push it. And we're going to flip it over and we'll separate it. Pull the back from the front and that seems to do better. And like, make sure you keep it. Oops. Yeah, I know. So the lighter, so you have to push a little bit yeah. more. Yeah more detail cut okay there we go so we have it transferred all right we're going to go over to the heat press and we'll put it on a shirt my Cricut um, press just for the sake of this video but for this transfer you can use your home iron as well and all of my transfers come with directions on how to do that so I've got um, my shirt laid out and this is, this happens to be a 60% cotton, 40% polyester. But with these transfers, you can use any material. It does not have to be a polyester for like the sublimation needs. It can be on any color as a fact. Should I put it on a different color than white? Yeah. No, it'll look good on this one. Okay. So I've got my heat press, it's warming up to 350 degrees, but I'm just going to set it on here and preheat my surface. And then I have my lint roller, of course, you want to make sure 
everything is clean. I printed off one of those t-shirt guides because I didn't want to buy it. So it tells you where the center is. Where did I put my transfer? Oh, over here. So, to find the center of your transfer, what you want to do is take it, fold it in half, not the sticky sides. You want to fold it in half, and up here at the top where there's extra plastic transfer material, and at the bottom, pinch it, because you want to create a, a crease, and this gives you a line, a bottom and a top line, so you know where to line it up. And we're going to take this top line and line it up right on the center line and then it goes all the way down and then you're going to take this out and I actually got to move my shirt up just a smidge that's my little mat this is why I like using my big heat press because I'm not confined to this small little pressing mat okay so we're all lined up my my easy press is warmed up I'm gonna cover it with the Teflon just so you don't burn your shirt and I'm gonna do it in two things so um, got it for 20 seconds we're gonna set the timer and I'm just gonna apply a little bit of pressure it does not need a lot of pressure this is between a light and a medium. So I'm going to let it run for the 20 seconds on the top. Pick it up and I'm going to put it on the bottom of the shirt. Because our design is just slightly bigger than the surface of the Easy Press. If you had an iron that you were using, just go over in different spots hold it down, apply some pressure. All right. I'm going to put that over there. And at this point, you should be able to peel this off. Oh, see, we didn't get it. It wasn't good there. It's another reason why I like to use the All right, you know we've got to press it again over here on this side. So I'm going to put that back on it. I'm going to put this on it. And I'm just going to push down on it a little bit harder. And then I'm going to start like, like I was ironing it. All right. There you have it. It's all down now. And you can pull it if you want. It is ready to wear. So, there we have it. Looks beautiful.